Hello everyone. I'm happy to have another Young Indian with us, part of the Voice of the Young series. Right now we have with us Shruti Kakade. Let's listen to her. Over to you, Shruti. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate this platform and I will just start. So my name is Shruti Kakade. I am a master student at Hertie School of Governance and my program is Data Science for Public Policy. I have a background in computer engineering and I took six years of work experience in data science and analytics before joining Herti. At Herti, my focus is into digital governance and uh, my interests are responsible AI, AI ethics and related regulations. So when I was in engineering, uh, I was surrounded by tech savvy people and uh, I was not really sure what to uh, opt for because uh, they were all were into software development and software engineering, uh, very good with the coding and I was still struggling. But uh, by the end of third year, I knew that I want to pursue data science. And then uh, I landed up as it, at my first job after engineering as a data analyst. It was pretty basic job, but later I built up some skills and also worked with the ML product. Uh, I worked in Pune for 3.5 years uh, in an IT sector, uh, but I thought that uh, I am interested in something more. So that way uh, I was interested in social sciences. Uh, I have a background because my father is a government servant and he also worked as a legal counselor and my mother uh, has a master's degree in social work. So because of that, in school only, my teacher had told my parents that I should pursue uh, UPSC. But uh, being first do first born daughter, I was not really sure to pursue arts. Instead, I took a practical decisions to have some con skills uh, and then apply those to a sector which I'm really interested in. So uh, I chose policy because I think it is a powerful tool to uh, reach to the grassroots to solve a problem uh, at a large scale. And because of that, I explored uh, different NGOs around Pune, outside Pune, uh, to know uh, how data skills could be applied. So I had explored labor markets and public health. Uh, and then I had joined lead at Korea University, that is um, policy research firm in New Delhi. So I actually had moved to New Delhi and worked there for two and a half years. Uh, there I got introduced to the policy making governance and how in general uh, those things are working and what is going on in those fields. So being a data scientist in a policy organization, I knew the struggle. Like these people are really in need of those people who are good with the content, who are good with the technology uh, and how th those can be applied later as well. So I had interest in GovTech. And um, due to that, I liked Hertie's Center of Digital Governance Research. I had explored a little bit and I found I wanted to join Hertie that time. So I came to Hertie, uh, but Hertie had a Center of Digital Governance, uh, like a research seminar or series something when I joined in September 23. And they introduced us that digital governance has two wings. First is uh, when you apply technology in public sector and the other is when you govern the technology itself. So the latter part was more interesting to me because when I entered EU, I got introduced with the GDPR, I got introduced to the different regulations. And uh, as I told, I had a background, like my father worked as a legal counselor and I was interested in law and ethics. So I thought that that latter side is something interesting I want to explore. And I not only the reason I, that I have a background, but also uh, I thought, uh, I like the aspect of ethics, like how uh, important it is to uh, pursue because I think in October 23, when I was here, uh, Biden's executive order on AI was passed and every country had started uh, talking about the regulations, like some are were developing them as well. In November 23, there was UK safety summit where this conversation was in the main focus. And uh, then we also got introduced to ChatGPT during pandemic, but later so many co companies started developing their own AI product and started releasing it. And it was like increasing, increasing a lot. I mean, uh, the talk about AI, AI hype in general, everyone was talking about it. But uh, as technology was pacing up, there were really uh, not uh, many regulations in place. In fact, only EU had uh, AI Act, which got passed in March 24. So that, that got considered as a global standard, but yeah, we all know that EU has already so many regulations and up upon that they had built it. Uh, so it was still in, in talk and I had also 
uh, noticed the point that uh, technology access is all about privilege. Uh, we, as a country, India, we have this issue of digital divide and inequality with the technology, and that could be tackled with the right uh, regulatory frameworks. And I thought th this this is an interesting thing where I want to explore more. Uh, then I think I when I was at Hurti, uh, I used to work part time in a law firm, and I, it was a legal tech uh, work. And then I left that job, and I had uh, I was a part of uh, AI governance challenge, which was sponsored by Civica. It is a national uh, network of social science universities. So uh, I like we gave students problems to find out the um, specific use cases in different sectors. Where, where they they think that this can be uh, regulated and why why it is, there is a need to do that like when we talk about technology regulations uh, we are not supposed to regulate the technology itself but the application of it that's why sector was important so my focus entirely was to discover different sectors and find out the gaps and understand how it can be mitigated so that way i explored and my thesis was about uh, finding sector specific regulatory gaps in usa federal court cases so my intention was to understand where we are lagging behind and how these things are uh, proceeding in general so i think yeah there are different regulations till now but different countries have them and uh, there are developing as well but i think when when we talk about south south asia like south global south countries we also need to understand that uh, we lack in infrastructure, we lack in compute, and we lack in equal research funding. Uh, so we cannot just focus on the regulatory aspect, but also into development aspect. So innovation uh, is also important while we design AI strategy for those countries. And it is still going ongoing topic. It is pretty complex and it will not be tackled by just a regulation, but a collaboration of the inter uh, different governments and also civil society and uh, businesses who are interested in self-regulation. And that's how we, we can tackle it. So the uh, regulation and innovation should go hand in hand. This is what we are now, uh, like Hattie taught us that. But... Uh, in general regulations are seen as like they are hindering innovation so uh, th this is an issue like uh, when we talk about ai we already know that um, there are chances of getting it misused right? people do not have enough ai literacy to know what algorithms are making them do and this like even if in a tier two tier three cities uh, like there is not even if there is now there is a very much reach of the technology before it was not but they still are lacking in the literacy aspect. So making them educate about it is also important. And if we could come with such a collaborative framework where uh, we are uh, making this technology responsible, then we will lead uh, to the like better society. Like when we talk about making use of technology to form a better society, we should also think on the aspect like making technology itself better. Otherwise, it, it will be disastrous. And yeah, eventually making a better human beings uh, as well. Uh, it is a like as technology impacts society, society also impacts technology, and it is an inter in uh, like con connection. And when we talk about this uh, regulatory aspect, we also need to think about the broader implications in future. That that's what my journey was about. Let me just thank you, Shruti. That's a very short and concise statement of what you said. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first, how was it for you after so many years of work to go back to studying? First, that, and then second part of it abroad, and then if broad, why hurty? So it's a three part okay. question. You know, what is it like after six years to go back to class? And why did you decide to get a master's in public policy, which was not your field? I mean, you have given some hint. And then if you went to go, decided to go abroad, fine. Then why hurty? So let's hear that. Okay, so I think after taking work experience, when I was taking work experience, I was simultaneously working on my own thing. So I was never into the work whole 
like whole time i was because i was still exploring myself like i think um, i was still exploring so that's why uh, i but uh, yeah you i can totally understand like actually attending classes uh, and studying everything so uh, to be honest first semester was very difficult for me like i just survived it somehow but uh, later i like started giving it more time and i focused on particular subjects like actually studying waking up early in the morning and actually doing the assignments i did those things uh, later and ended i it all ended well and for going abroad uh, i wanted to have exposure with the international community that that was my first uh, uh, intention the second was hurti's uh, digital governance uh, focus because i think hurti has a limited a set of people for data science for public policy batch and they focus uh, on students development very well like it is very all interdisciplinary environment they give we, uh, like i there is no one in my class who has done similar to what i am doing now and it is very interesting to uh, learn everyone's journey because they are coming from very different background and they are going they are going towards one thing but very different way and it is pretty interesting to me and hurti also gives you a very good exposure internationally as it is a global university uh, like it is recognizable so that those were my interest and how do you pay for it or do they give you a good scholarship yeah they gave me a scholarship so i was here on a scholarship <laughs> okay and then uh, what's next for you uh yeah i am interested in ai governance research so either phd or a research, uh, research role where i'm actually working on the systems uh, on the policy or law aspect otherwise i would be working as data scientist for a like a social good project i mean uh, i i have kept all my options open for now okay all right and okay uh, since you are <clears throat> experienced enough uh, what tips do you have for young people who are in 11th or 12th my okay. young guy is that it you been there, not there for quite some time but still let's see if you have any tips for those young people yeah i think they should not just follow the, what everyone is doing there is a trend like my friend is going this stream and i am like they they are they seem to follow the trend but they need to understand themselves better like where what their family is about mm -hmm. what they are they are their inclinations are and nowadays like uh, i get a lot of calls people want to do data science right away i mean but that is not possible uh, like just to pick up your technology and do data science there are some diploma courses and people just do those typical assignments to get th those kind of jobs but yeah. practice on coding make your basic strong math statistics yeah. and then enter so i think if you want to do it do it seriously not just because you are getting paid highly okay All right. Well, you've talked quite a bit about your professional side. Uh, can you share some personal side also, so that we know the full aspect of you? You know, what is it that you like about Germany? What is it that you enjoy in Berlin? What is it that yeah. drive makes you happy here, there, everywhere? Well, what is it that's personal about you that we would like to know? Berlin is pretty international so i had friends from different countries and i liked about that also in other parts of germany there are so many people who are like very stringent about knowing the language uh, but in berlin we can talk in english and uh, like i i really like it is history and arts and uh, like very cultural city mm -hmm. and i explored every like i almost berlin and uh, i liked to, to be here to, it was a really good experience Mm. yeah in general eu uh, for i i liked european culture and everything okay but that's just what you enjoyed but your personal side what makes you happy friends food travel yeah yeah i travel and i like food or of course <laughs> i'm very much a foodie yeah uh, yeah I, i made friends at hurti and i actually i had struggled a lot before but now uh, i have made i am a introvert person and i hardly connect to people but when i connect then it's at a deeper level and i like to talk a lot so mm. that way i found people uh, who are into social sector i think they have empathy and social skills to connect to others and those are like i i could match that vibe and mm. it was nice that way
Okay. Anything else you want to tell us? Sort of a final word, since you seem to be running out of things to tell us. Like, what's your message? What's your final word? I think one should always keep exploring new stuff and enjoy life because we seem to have only one type of view or one aspect when we look at life and but it's not like that like we have a diversity and we one should always eager to explore different mm. sides with different and just live fully whatever they are doing it okay well if you don't have anything else to add here Shruti, let's end it here today don't okay. go away i want to talk to you offline i'll okay. be back with another young indian or an expert soon till then bye everybody Bye. Bye.